Senator Harper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and first off, Mr. Chairman, I just want to say thank you for uh, calling the hearing today and uh, to our, our uh, Senate caucus and our Senate leadership uh, for their participation in, in uh, making this happen. It's, uh, it's good to be with all of you today. Uh, I think it's uh, imperative and important. I know I want to echo a lot of what some of my colleagues have said. You know, we have heard from a lot of our constituents, and I think that's why we're here. Uh, and, and, and I appreciate uh, all of you being here today just to, just to answer questions so we can have this open dialogue because I think it's important uh, to have a transparent process where, where we're able to ask the questions that we're being asked on a consistent basis and we can ask it uh, in a way where, where everyone can hear those uh, hear the answers to those questions and hopefully uh, in some cases uh, in, in some of the things you've alluded to we can rectify some of the issues that, that may be false that are out there and that, and that those that those concerns that may not be false we can get answers to to address and, and see what we can do as a legislative body to address those going forward so um, I, I want to start off by by saying this uh, I think I and I can speak for everyone here today we we and I, I think the pro tem alluded to this we, we do condemn the personal attacks on each of you uh, I don't I don't support those I, I think those are uh, uncalled for uh, and and um, anything we can do to support you uh, in those efforts we want we, we want you to know that we have your back uh, because we, uh, uh, we 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 don't we don't think that those are appropriate regardless of who you are and regardless of what office you hold um, but uh, but we, we know that there's a lot of Um, there's a lot of excitement right now in, in this process, and I think all of you know that. Uh, but that said, um, just some things that I've been asked from some of my constituents, and, and I think just kind of reiterating some of the things that have already been asked, the pro tem referred to the ballot drop boxes. On the video footage that, that, you, uh, that we have that is required in regards to the drop boxes, you said that is reviewed. How often is that reviewed? Do we review all of that footage? Uh, is is uh, is there a process to do that, or is that is that something you're continually working through? We review it upon request. Okay. Um, if, if we have get a complaint or if there's an issue, then we ask for it. Going back to what I was talking about earlier, how you know, remember in each county there's a bipartisan board of elections. They can choose to review that as often as as they want. Um, uh, and you know, and when signature for signature matching, they can choose to be as involved in that uh, as they want, as they want, and they and, and you know, we we encourage that. Okay, on the uh, on the ballot drop boxes, is there a, a verifiable chain of custody from the time that box is picked up, taken to the warehouse or, or wherever it is taken to, until that? ballot boxes open to be counted yes uh, so the the regulation requires that uh, at least two people who were sworn um, deputy registrars uh, pick up those ballots count them put it put them in a, a, a sealed container uh, fill out a chain of custody form deliver it to the the election uh, county elections office at that point um, they confirm the the number of ballots um, and then uh, and then fill out the chain of custody form that's been delivered. So at that time, we and see, it's got to have the ballot can has to be sealed. Okay. Also. So at that time that that is done, we we know how many ballots are in that drop box when it is taken to that that place. So there is a count of those number of ballots at that particular time. Correct. Okay. So regardless of how long it may take us to count ballots, uh, we know how many ballots we may or may not be counting in the next couple of hours during that time period is that so for drop boxes yes that's correct you okay. know um, and you're, you're talking about for when they close them up at yes. 7 p.m. on election night because yep. you know they're emptying them every day and bringing them in um, on election night yep they'll have that count and then there's also ones that come in you know to the office by that by that time 7 p.m. just through the mail process uh, there would not be a count on those but um, you know but that would be they would be counted as well. Understood. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, Senator Dolezal in regards to the signature match uh, audit and verification uh, issues and, and uh, some of the of what he uh, discussed in, in that regard and I know you've already you've already answered those questions but uh, I think uh, I think you hit on a, a really a really good point in the fact that 
um, making sure the person that, uh, that, that sent in that absentee ballot is actually the person that signed that absentee ballot. Uh, is there a process, do you have a process, or are we working on a process where we can audit that particular uh, provision? Uh, other than auditing the actual signature itself, I think it would be just as important to audit the signature verification to make sure that person actually did sign that ballot. Are we, is that something we do? Are we looking at doing, or is that something we need to work on going forward? I'm not sure I follow. Is that separate so, so separate from the signature verification? Yes, it would be separate from the signature verification. You mentioned uh, earlier in, in your in your response to Senator Dolezal in regards to signature verification, the best way to verify uh, signatures is to verify that the person that sent in that absentee ballot is actually the person that signed said absentee ballot. Yes. Is there a way that we audit that to make sure that that is taking place maybe in a sample audit of some sort or a random audit? The, the way we do that right now in Georgia law is through the signature verification. Um, I think uh, what, what we're looking at and what we will bring to you guys shortly is what we think are possible better ways to do that going forward. Okay, so you're looking to bring us some suggested changes on how we can tighten that up. And I know the Secretary has stated he, uh, he would like to see some sort of ID provision in regards to absentee ballots, and, and I, would, uh, I would support that. Senator, um, if you will wrap it up. Okay. One more. Well, I'll, I'll get to, 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 to some of the uh, me to some of the questions that I have then uh, really quick. I had a, a list of them, Mr. Chairman, but I'll. Well, one uh, more question, but I'll, I'm sure I'll, the Secretary uh, of State will receive your questions. I'll, I'll uh, well, I, I, if I could get a couple. I, I have a couple that I think oh, I need to. You, I, you're, I'll you're, do it really you're, fast. You're eating into Senator Gucci's time. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it really fast. Uh, Senator Parent referenced a couple of rulings from 2018. Uh, do we know what president appointed those judges that that uh, uh, made those rulings? Uh, yes, sir. For all the um, rulings that went against us in, in pre-2018, they were appointed by President Obama. So there were President Obama appointed judges that. <clears throat> issued rulings that went against the state of Georgia. Is that correct? Okay. Correct. I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, in regards to the consent agreement that was made in March, was the Georgia GOP involved in that process? Um, our, we've been fortunate to have some of the best election lawyers in the country representing us. Um, and uh, our lawyer in that process is also the general counsel for the state Republican Party. So the, the lawyer that works for the GOP was involved, just not necessarily the GOP in general? Correct. Okay. Uh, and, and just in regards to the consent agreement, um, why did the uh, Secretary of State or, or your office feel that you had the authority to sign that agreement um, when, uh, in fact, the U.S. Constitution and the Georgia Constitution leaves authority to make changes in regards to state law uh, that is left up to the General Assembly to determine uh, what what led you to believe you had the authority to make that agreement uh, with the Democratic Party. So um, we don't believe that changed law at all. Okay. The first thing in that agreement is you have to verify signatures, and if you don't, you follow the law. That's That's what it says. And I spend a lot of my time defending the laws you guys pass, a lot of it. And I take it very seriously. So I disagree with the, uh, with the sort of premise of your Understood. question. Uh, uh, I, well, I understand. I, I got the okay. I'd respect to the witnesses waiting outside. We, we, we've got to move on. Senator Gooch, okay. I'm going to go to you. I'm 